Hey guys, it has been so crazy since I got back from Vegas. I have had losses left and right and I finally figured out that it was a bacterial infection. So what I'm going to try now are some steps that were provided by Sean Latrakis and this is supposed to really help with the deaths and potentially cure the infection. So I'm going to try that along with a little, a couple of other steps to see if I can fix the issue in my tank. So the first thing you want to do is remove any shrimp that show signs of infection and that includes shrimp that are pale in color or cloudy, shrimp that have white, green, yellow, brown growth in or around them, and shrimp that are missing or have broken legs or antenna. So I took these two out. These are the only two males in the tank and they're paler than the females of course, but I'm just going to take them out just in case. They are very active still and they don't look sick, but um, they are a little bit paler than the rest. So I'm just going to quarantine them just in case. They're drip acclimating in this Tupperware container right now, but they will be going into this small little breeder box with some java moss, a small air stone, and a ton of Indian almond leaves, which leads me to the next thing. So the next thing you want to do after removing your sick shrimp is add a ton of Indian almond leaves into your tank. So I had already had one Indian almond leaf. That's actually um, this one leaf right here. I cut it up into a ton of smaller pieces, but this has been in the tank for about a month. And then I added another piece that I cut up, which is still soaking at the top. So the reason you're adding Indian almond leaves, I'm assuming, is because they release tannins into the water. And tannins are known to have antibacterial and antifungal properties, and they are just really um, healthy for shrimp in general. So this is really going to help with the bacterial infection, just having a ton of these in the water. Another thing you can add other than Indian almond leaves is pomegranate bark, but I don't have any of that, so I didn't add it. So the next thing you want to do is lower the temperature in your tank. Mine was sitting at 74 to 75 with the heater in there, so after taking out the heater, it's jumped down to 72, but I would actually prefer it closer to 68 to 70 because bacteria do well in higher temperatures, so the lower the temperature, the better, but you still want your shrimp to be comfortable, so the 68 to 70 range is preferable. One other thing I did other than removing the heater to help with the um, temperatures in the tank is I turned off one of my lights. So I turned off this one and I turned off this, or left this one on, and I have it diagonally across the tank so that it will um, light up the entire tank. But hopefully having half the lights on will reduce the heat output into the tank and lower the temperature even more. So after you've done all that, removed the six shrimp, added a ton of Indian almond leaves, and reduced the temperature in your tank, what you now want to do is reduce and limit the uh, amount and type of food that you're feeding your shrimp. So you want to do away with any type of commercial shrimp food, like the hard foods, like the ones I have here. I've got the Ebidama, I've got Borneo Wild Grow and Shrimp Dinner. So hard foods are a no-no. What you do want to feed them are um, a combination of the leaf litter. Obviously you'll have Indian almond leaves in there for them to eat, but I also have um, an amaranth leaf right there and a mulberry leaf right there just to give them a little bit of variety. And then you can also feed them SL Aqua Snowflake which is a great leave-in food because it also grows biofilm on it um, if the shrimp don't get to it. So <clears throat> you can actually leave it in the tank and it'll grow stuff for your shrimp to eat. And the other type of food that's okay are the pollen type foods, which are basically powdered foods. So this is the Chiebi, and I've got beta-glucan and factor AE right here. So these are okay to feed your shrimp. What I'm doing is I am only going to feed them um, alternating types of um, these powdered foods every 
two to three days. So I was feeding every one to two days, um, and now I'm gonna space it out to two to three days just to um, kind of follow the less feeding rule. And the very last thing you want to do is dose the recommended amount of Flourish XL into your tank every day. Um, I'm not really sure what Flourish XL does, but this is what Sean had said to do, and he has been doing this for a very long time. So I'm going to go ahead and dose this into my tank every day for the next two weeks. I've also purchased these two products from BiPetShrimp.com that should help with... Um, the bacterial infection. So these are extracts from both Indian almond leaves and alder cones, if that will focus at all. There you go. And then these, or this one, is extract of all that stuff. Propolis, wild garlic, vitamins, minerals, and beneficial bacteria. So, um, this stuff is supposed to be really good, and I dosed some of this into the little breeder tank, and I dosed the recommended amount into the main tank. Alright, so that is pretty much what I am doing to prevent any more deaths and to cure the bacterial infection in my tank. So, um, I'll go ahead and update you guys in a few days, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.